Hey, welcome back to the Sexy Brutale. We have got our final person to save, Lucas Bonds, the Marquis himself. We've learned a lot. It, we've learned well. Let's look what, what's in the brochure here. Reginald Sixpence. We have his. We've learned about him. He's a genius clockmaker and mechanic. Who was originally commissioned to create the extravagant timepieces featured throughout the mansion. On one visit, he brought his niece along to help with a particularly challenging piece. After the Marquis met her, the rate of Sixpence's invitation to the mansions increased dramatically, and over the years and events that followed, the two men became extremely close. But Reginald could be somewhat blind to the intentions and emotions of others. He had become distraught that one of the Marquis's projects that Sixpence helped with may have had a darker and more dangerous aim than he imagined. So here's what we have learned. We have learned that the Marquis blew up the mansion. Everybody except for him is dead. And I don't know if this is all going on in his mind or if this mask dude is some sort of, um, who knows, some sort of anything like devil or angel. I think this is, this is his wife, uh, like the ghost of his wife, the memory of his wife. And I, f I don't know if it's on his head or what, but if, if we can save him... I think if we can save him from, in this, from the explosion, then this guy will let, will let him go. So what can we do down here? What is, what is happening down here? A violin for practice. Sixpence is handy. Work pieces have been taken from it. Enormous clock looming over the whole mansion. And now he's back. So we got to... Get out of here. I think at this point, it's already going to be too late. So. I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's going to leave the room again or not. Uh, he is, he is. He left something in the other room. We're going to try this again. See what else is going on in down here. Um, oh, what's this here? I have no idea what that just did, but it seems worrisome. I just set myself to that, the clock of that there. A Bible, the inscription is from Lafciato. The little statue was carved by Trinity. Can I go out this door? No, I can't even go out that door. My Lucas, the other thing, no, I, w I wonder if when it blows up, I think I was hooked to this clock before and now I'm hooked up to that one and I'm wondering if it blows up, if it'll do something fancy because the pocket watch is like hooked onto it. I really don't know. It's a big gamble. Let's find out. What was that? That? My good sir was the explosion. That was your explosives going off too soon. Theater, but how? The casino, no! No, no, no! The timer, you do something. No, how can this be happening? I have to get out. Ellie, Ellie! No, no! He did this, Boone. Please, he's a good man. Oh God, what have I done? So now, if I, if I, and he jumps out, and I mean, can I even go down now? I can even go down. So. There's nothing I can do, I think, but just rewind time. Yeah, shall we go again? Let's restart the day. Now we're, now we're in here. Okay, excellent. Replica of the Sexy Brutale. Location of fireplaces have been marked on it with flags. Aram's wire cutters. Oh, I see how this is going to go. Did that... The fireplaces... 
We've got to go, I think, to all of the fireplaces and cut the wires so the explosive doesn't happen. Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's right there. Okay. All right, we got a job to do. Um, let's actually go ahead. Let's reset the day. Would we lose the wire cutters, or do we have to keep them? We lose them, so we got to do all of this in one day. Um, we don't have a lot of time. Do not have a lot of time. All right, come on, man. Actually, hold it. Wait, what's with the wire cutters on this? That's that's gonna keep that one from blowing up. Okay. Wait, this wire is cut. Who? Wait, this isn't right. The timer. I made a mistake. This would have gone off early. My God. Boon. Whoa, whoa, what, what? Why am I even here? I think we can forego having the mass chase you, Boon. There's no need for that anymore. Not here. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I don't... Lafciato, what are you doing here? Please, you have to leave. This, I can explain. Rather, I don't imagine I need to. I'm so sorry, my old friend. I should have told you, but you can't be rather proper, no? I'm gonna burn this place down. You know I love this place, it's everything. But I love her more. We have a child on the way, you know? And this mansion, the cost, the sheer drain of it. I'm not the young reckless gambler I used to be, Laffy. I thought you'd be proud. I've locked those demons up tight. No more chasing the high stakes for me. Although I will admit this plan was somewhat thrilling. By the time it's where everything will detonate once everyone is safely outside, there's one of these devices at every fireplace, and the fireplaces are all connected. But no one will be hurt. But then it's the darnest thing, this wire here was cut. And I've just noticed a rather terrible mistake. I think if it hadn't been cut, then everything would have gone off early. I can't imagine what would have happened. You see? He never meant it. He never meant to hurt anyone. Please, please stop this torture. Uh, Eleanor, is that you? Yeah, I was right. It is Eleanor. They're reunited. No, he did not intend. But he acted. And they died. They all died. He killed them, Boone. He killed everyone he ever cared about. His friends. His own wife. His own word You don't, we don't... We don't deserve to be forgiven. <laughs> they don't deserve to be forgotten. Don't you see, Boone? This is how I keep them alive. This party. This day. This party. This day. I keep that agony fresh. I see their faces. I remember them. She would have us forgive ourselves. She would let us go. She would have you live. But I'm not ready. I will never be ready. Please, Boone. Boone. Everything you see in this mansion, it's the memory of a broken man. Reliving the nightmare of the night he murdered everyone dear to him. One terrible act that he has wished he could take back every second that he has lived since. There was only one man responsible for everything happening in this mansion. Lucas. Lucas, yep, the good Lucas and the bad Lucas. And... Lucas. So I've been him all along too? Look how old you have gotten, my love. It's time. We must go to see him.
They're all waiting. They're all Lucas. They're all me. The old Lucas, who is also Lafciato Boone. It's been more than 40 years, Lucas. You've punished yourself long enough. You almost died when you fell. Then it's been like you stayed alive just to make sure you suffered. You were hospitalized, near dead. You went to prison, but it still wasn't enough. You have suffered and missed us every day. We aren't here to forgive you, Lucas. You will never have that. We are gone, and we cannot say the words. You cannot ever know if we would say those words. But as much as you have hated yourself, you have always known one thing. In your heart of hearts, you know that I would not have wanted you to suffer forever. One day, enough would be enough. Today can be that day, Lucas, if you want. If you are ready. You don't have to forget. You only have to forgive yourself just enough to live. His very appearance is painful for me to look at, just as my appearance is painful for you. He is the king of this mansion. He is perhaps the purest glimpse into your soul, my love. Frail, ragged, alone, but beyond powerful. Enough rage and pain and grief to destroy or rebuild this mansion a hundred thousand times over, trapped down here, watching his friends murdered over and over and over to these mirrors. He is king of this mansion, but a puppet king. It's time to release him from this torment. Take your mask, Lucas. It will return every aspect of yourself. Then let us go. Let us all go. It doesn't mean you forget. I love you. There is one other option. Walk away. Use the watch. Turn time back. Let the party start again. We will all be here. Your friends will be here. Your mansion. Your memories. You don't have to let them go. It's your choice. Do you want to restart the day? Oh, man. There's so much we still don't know. There's so many stories that we haven't heard. There's so much in the brochure we haven't learned. Ah, oh, but he suffered for so long. Let's let him rest. There's stories. They'll keep. This place is yours, Lucas. It is horrible and broken and twisted. You don't have to be prisoner here. I loved you. I loved you so much and you loved me. I know you're sorry. I know it's not enough, but it is done. Let some of the pain go. Live your life. Goodbye, my love. What, what was that? They all spread out and go in different ways.
He's going through and saving everybody with with his mask on. Wait, oh, locking the guy in there. Yeah, pulling the lever, making right all of the things that he had made wrong. All on the same day, everybody gets saved. Goodbye, my love. Whatever I am, I'm always here. Visit if you want, but don't stay too long. It's time to make new memories. Time to live the life you still have. Time to move on, old man. The Sexy Brutal. Thank you, Tequila Works. That was an uh, amazing, amazing game. I, I mean, there's so much more that we could have gone to uh, to try to learn. There's all those secrets, and I'm tempted to maybe, like, you know, jump back and, and try it again. But I feel like, you know, poor Lafciato Boone, poor... Poor Marquis, poor Lucas. To be stuck for so long, torturing himself for so long. And yeah, I mean, he did wrong. I mean, I'm not forgiving him, but uh, I feel he, he he did his time. He did his time. And uh, uh, I mean, I guess it makes a lot of sense in, in a lot of ways. But I'll be honest, I was, I was not sure that... Uh, they were going to be able to make a coherent story out of this. And I mean, putting it all inside of his mind, I guess, in some ways, it's a little bit kind of a cheap move or something like that. Or, you know, it's a, a narrative get-out-of-jail-free card for weird stuff. But I think they did it really, really well. I mean, there was a kind of reason for it all. There was something that was kind of driving it all. And, um, yeah, yeah, that was uh, really, really well done. I mean... Uh, a couple of the puzzles I you saw, I got kind of stumped on. Maybe that's because I'm just kind of a numpty, and if I was just a little smarter, uh, <laughs> it would have been cakewalk. It wasn't like the most super challenging of puzzles, but the story was, I think, really, really compelling. And the way, like, I mean, it kind of makes a lot of sense. Like, all the ghosts, so they're like, everyone's in a way a ghost. But other ghosts are just like kind of generic, kind of vague memories getting in the way. And the individuals are like actual, um, you know, memories that he has of people that he really cares for. But uh, yeah, that I, I, I had a fantastic time um, with this game. I uh, really, when I wasn't playing, I kind of couldn't stop thinking and like wondering what on earth was going on. And I did kind of suspect that both the guy in the tank and the... Um, the kind of guy with the green mask were like both different sides of the marquee, like the the side that was punishing himself. There were all those Bible verses about punishing and all that kind of stuff that kept getting talked about. But on the other hand, um, that he was also Lafciato. That I did not see coming at all. That uh, I've it was all me the whole time uh, was fa was amazing. So. Yeah, thank you for playing the Sissy Brutal, and thank you for watching and listening to this story with me and coming along and, you know, face palming with my uh, idiot idiocies and silliness. Uh, but thank you so much. It's been fantastic. There'll be something else coming soon. But like always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Hey, just back to a little postscript. Uh, after I finished, I loaded up my game a second you know, time to see what was going on. I saw in the brochure, all of these secrets have been unlocked. And like the room of all old habits, there, there's things in here that we never um, like found out as we were going through. And I thought, you know, in case uh, people were like disappointed that I didn't 
I didn't kind of do more or kind of keep going at the end to find out more of the story. I thought I'd come here and at least read through these uh, really quick. And then if, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll do that. And then if it learn anything interesting, we'll talk about it after. But the King in Red's Chamber, that was the very bottom. A room of true horror existed in the twisted dark heart of the mansion. An ancient man, his broke, body broken and ravaged by the atrocities he has endured, hangs suspended in a chamber that forces his breath into and out of his lungs. Surrounding him are seven mirrors, showing him the murders of the quest throughout the mansion. With every death, the man weeps tears of blood, and the tank is full. A nightmare engine rains the blood down over the mansion, starting the same hellish tale all over. So that was all the rain we would see every single, like, when it got really late. Oh my gosh, his tears of blood. He's the near mindless source of power that fuels the endless day of the sexy brutal. This is the throne room of the king in red. Secret Haven, so this is where uh, where we found Eleanor hiding out. Hidden away in the mansion's garden is a tiny cottage where the Marquis and his wife would spend their time together when not planning and organizing the hectic and draining schedule of the mansion. It was a solace for both of them, and the more time the Marquis spent there, the more he longed to retreat from the demands of the mansion and stress, to spend more time with his wife, preparing for a new life as a growing family. It was, it is, I cannot go on. The Room of Old Habits. I don't think I ever have ever been there. You found me again, eh? You dare lock me away. I missed you, old friend. I will rip you apart. The adventures we got up to together, you were mine. Do you miss those days? Your rage and joy was nectar. Let's play around together. I will only need one. I know there's so much to think about. To catch up on, give in. It's all so easy. Just deal the card. Deal the card. Spin the wheel. I'll never let you leave. It'll be like old times. I'll come closer. These chains really aren't necessary. Come closer. I don't know what this room of old habits is, so that's confusing to me. This sexy brutal fire raging at the mansion. How does it come to be? Where is this? Can it be real? There must be a path of the flames, a way to fight past this hellish burning nightmare to a better place on the other side. That's what the storybooks teach us, surely. The past every great trial are green fields of success and happiness. Then let's forge onward. Let's push the pain and the blind hope that somehow, in some way, a better world awaits. The chapel. The Marquis was not a religious man, at least not at the beginning. Not in his youth, at least. Yep. But his wife was, and the Marquis cherished her. He originally built the chapel as a gift for Eleanor, then over the years found himself spending more and more of his free moments in quiet contemplation here. Whenever he had a difficult decision to make, it was here that the Marquis would sit and think. He felt increasing guilt over the fact that he had also used the construction of the stained glass window as a particularly devious cover for one of his most closely guarded secrets. The planning room. The room covered in sketches, diagrams, and notes, the scale replica of the sexy brutal mansion on a table. The model shows every fireplace in the mansion marked clearly with a flag. The pieces of clockwork, mechanisms, and volatile looking substances are scattered around. It appears the Marquis and Reginald Sixpence were collaborating on a secret project together. To what end? To what purpose? The clock tower. Welcome to my home, old friend, or should I say our home? It feels good to finally be able to speak face to face. Well, the gold mask does somewhat get in the way, but we've always understood each other, haven't we? Thanos? No, I'm afraid it's me who's been leaving you these little dotes. It's always been me. I built this place brick by brick. Sweat, tears, and blood. I'm glad you're here in a way. You see, this is where it all began. Or where it all ended. It can all be yours. It can all be ours. After all, what else is left, old friend? Lafciato Boone, the sinful preacher. In his youth, Lafciato Boone was a gambler and casino owner, much like the Marquis. But in his older years, he renounced his indulgent lifestyle and turned to religion. How the first two met is unclear, but over the years, they became firm friends, and Lafciato had always been something of a guide and mentor to Lucas. When trying to cope with the pain and loss of his family, the pain that ultimately created the mansion never-ending loop, Lucas imagined himself as Lafciato, drawing what little solace he could from his old friend's faith and strength. The Marquis himself, Lucas Bonds, a wild and erratic gambler, Lucas's addiction brought him to the brink of ruin and madness before fortune smiled on him, making him rich beyond his wildest dreams. He created the sexy, brutal casino mansion, but as costs mounted and his priorities changed, he sought a way to escape, resulting in the criminal deaths of those he held dearest and destroying everything he was or dreamed of. Over the decades that passed, Lucas has relived the consequences over and over, unsure whether death or life in torment was his correct punishment. Perhaps now, finally, the manifest love in his wife's memory has allowed this old man some peace in his final days. Eleanor 
Bonds, the Red Dove. Eleanor met Lucas through her uncle Reginald Sixpence. Originally, she was enraptured by his flair and charm, but as the two fell in love, Lucas grew, grew came. Lucas came to rely on her grace and judgment in almost all challenges they faced together. When Eleanor became pregnant, everything changed for Lucas, and he began to look for ways to provide a secure future for the both of them. Her death and that of their unborn child unmade Lucas's life. Their memory is pure agony to him, but he also knows that she would not want him to suffer forever. The events of the sexy brutal were born from the impossible conflict between these two states of mind. It makes a lot of sense. The Bloody Girl. The Bloody Girl is the manifest memory of Lucas's wife, Eleanor. His wife bought pure, brought purest joys to Lucas, but knowing that he caused her death is white hot, impossible grief and agony. The bloody girl has been trapped in the mansion all the years that Lucas has tormented himself. To look upon her as torture with every detail of her suffering impossible to forget, etched across every part of her face and body, but within her memory is a seed of forgiveness. Lucas knows deep down that she would still want him one day to be able to move on and live a life, so not everything of worth was lost on that one terrible night. And Deuteronomy Bound, the gold, that's the name of the gold skull. The man the gold I always thought it was green. Anyway, the man the golden skull mask is a terrible aspect of Lucas that never wishes for him to forgive himself. In his mind, the mansion has been created to keep the tortured memories of everyone fresh and alive. In this way, Gold Skull believes he honors them as best he can, by never allowing them to be forgotten, and never allowing him, Lucas, the Marquis, to forgive himself and move on with his life. Gold Skull has ruled the mansion and Lucas's mind for decades, only in his most recent of times has a love of Eleanor as the bloody girl, but the tiniest crack in the nightmare prison he's created. Gold Skull's will shapes the mansion, but the raw power to impose his vision is drawn from a deeper, darker well. The King in Red. So that is, I think, amazing. I mean, I said stuff during the credits, but I'll say it again. And I, I didn't say it like, like this, but I mean, I think in a way, the way the story of, you know, these five, Lofsiato, who, like, as the Marquis, as Lofsiato, Lucas as the Marquis, like from before, um, the the King in Red, the Deuteronomy Bound, you know, all his aspects of Lucas, and then uh, Eleanor as the happy, like the remembered person he loved, and the Bloody Girl as like the torment, and all the way they kind of interact together is this, I think, like a great kind of psychological um, like study. Of, of grief and guilt and the way kind of we, people, we can punish ourselves and torment ourselves over guilt over and over again. And we're both the one who's like doing the damage to ourselves, but also who's suffering from the damage of our guilt, even when those who we've harmed are beyond. And even when we know they wouldn't want us to keep be, you know harming ourselves in this way. I think it's really fantastic. What started looking like just kind of a, a kind of, um, kind of wacky dark comedy with time travel involved, really turned out to have a, I think a compelling is the right word, but a really kind of moving story. And I think this one's going to stay with me for a long time. But yeah, so if you stay for this postscript, thanks again. Thanks for uh, stopping by to, to read the secrets with me. And as always, I, I really appreciate uh, appreciate your watching, uh, the commenting, the, the, the participation, you know, that you've been my companions as we've gone through this story together. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon.